It is with a Christ-dependent faith that we desire for events such as this to prosper in re-echoing the call to the youth in the ever-increasing need for faithful workers for this plentiful harvest where the laborers are few. Living in a generation whose daily lives and goals are mostly indulged in self-gratification, driven by pride and false standards of what a successful person is, we need to have people who will stand for the Lord and live for His glory alone. We aim to inspire whomever and wherever there are souls who are thirsting for the kind of life which seeketh not its own. One which is lived by denying self continually and losing oneself in the service of others. We have a good news which is the most important message to be spread rapidly in our world now stricken with diseases and problems arising from the sins of men. The book Messages to Young People reminds us with the cause of the mission trips we do. Let it be the study of your lives to bless and save others is one reminder that we should take heed. Though limited with our human frailties, personal, spiritual growth struggles, and many more, we believe that by God's grace and in His strength, we can accomplish something to further the proclamation of messages with eternal realities. Do not hesitate to work for the Lord because you think you can do but little. Do your little with fidelity, for God will work with your efforts is a promise we believe. Recently, the team answered a call to serve in a faraway province. The journey, though prayed for, included inconveniences that can make one wary. Yet we had stepped over to take a break and enjoy where we are, fuel ourselves with food for the duration of the trip, and embark again. Like Satan working in the dark with his subtle ways to distract us, the sun did set on us along the way with the heavy rain to make the journey even harder. Yet with God's grace, we rode on, taking to heart that He is always with us everywhere we go. despise the youth, but be an example of the believers in words, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. It is found in 1 Timothy 4.12. God wants the youth, just like us, to become men in earnest mind, to be prepared for action in his noble work, and fitted to bear responsibilities. God calls the youth, just like us, uh, with hearts uncorrupted, that strong and brave, and determined to fight manfully in the struggle before us, that we may glorify God and bless humanity. If we youth would use the Bible as our study, uh, would but calm our impetuous desires, and listen to the voice of the Creator and Redeemer, we would not be only peace with God, but we would find ourselves noble and elevated. It is for our eternal interest, my young brethren, to take heed or to give heed into the instructions of the Word of God. God loves the youth. He knows our trials. He also knows that we will have to battle against the powers of darkness that strive to gain control of the human mind. And He has opened the way by which young men and women would enable to partake or to become one of the divine nature. It is said in Ecclesiastes 11.9 that we will rejoice and be cheer in these days. We will walk in our hearts, but let us remember that in all these things, God will put or bring this into His judgment. Our purpose or our rule as a youth in this world, my friends, it's not just to live to be happy or to live to accomplish all our desires, but it is to learn more about Christ and to give glory unto His name which is in heaven. When Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, 
all these things shall be added unto you. My young friends, the youth in this world, be the youth of God. A revival of true godliness is the greatest and most urgent of all needs. Let us follow Christ. Do not hesitate to follow His commandments, His ways, and don't forget in all His patterns because He is the patterns in all things. The Lord calls for the renewal of the straight testimony of born spirit. He calls to renew our spiritual life. The spiritual energies of His people have long been torpid, but there is a resurrection from its apparent death by prayer and confession of sin we must clear the king's highway as we do this the power of the spirit will come unto us we need the pentecostal energy this will come because the lord has promised to send his spirit and the all conquering power God calls upon us to hold firmly to the fundamental principles that are based upon unquestionable authority. A revival need be expected only answer in a prayer. Upon joining this camp meeting, I've realized so many things. I've unlocked the door of love, unity, compassion, and grace. A love which taught you how to love, and a love you never thought anyone could give you, and a love that is beyond you can imagine. My past views and perspective of life suddenly changed upon knowing how great the love of our God is. A father who gave up everything he had just to gain your love. He sees and cares the tiny weeds in the fields and how much more us that we are wonderfully and fearfully made by him. We've encountered so many trials along the way, but because this is his work, God does really find a way. Throughout my spiritual journey in this camp, God showed me his unending love and perfect will to mankind. That by true him and only him, you can win against sin. Let go and let God. Let go of your ways and let God ways do for you. And one thing that will be always in my heart and mind and soul is that because I am love and it's setting me free. Fellow youth and everyone who are watching this, the Lord bids us to follow His steps. To be a Christian is to represent Christ in every respect of our life. In whatever position in life, race, and age, the Lord calls you to be His representative. As a young man, I do have my hopes in seeing my fellow youth to engage in the Lord's work and to be more zealous and committed with the responsibilities that He entrusted and to cultivate every gifts and talents that He bestowed upon us, not for our own selfish desires, but for His sake, all for His glory. The Lord's primary concern is not on material things and temporal things, but on man's willing heart. Everyone, now is the time to be awake in our spiritual slumber and to keep ourselves in a position of watching and praying. Let us all move forward on that heavenly Canaan, hand in hand. If possible, none is left behind. And by God's grace, we'll all see each other there. Peace, my sincere prayer. Amen.